What is going on guys? Today we got a brand new video. We are going to be doing a full subwoofer and amp installation on the Beater Maz 3. This one's nice, so it's in the background. This is everything you need to know on how to install an amp as an amateur, the first time doing it. The way we're gonna be doing it, the techniques, is first time. So if you're scared about doing this and really don't wanna spend money on a shop doing it, then this is a video to watch. My most popular video on the channel is actually a sub and amp uh, install and it was horrible, so I hope a lot of you guys that were about to watch that are now watching this. Everything you need to know, what to do, how to wire, where to run your wires that we're gonna be covering today. And while you guys are here, if you guys are interested in looking at some of the cool design shirts that fit nice, feel nice, then make sure to check out mcgillracingdivision.com. For you Mazda guys, we got the Ronin collection, 4th Gen Mazda 3, very simple, nice designs that you won't be embarrassed. Wearing out in the public. But without further ado, grab your Timmy's coffee and let's get straight in to the install. So right in front of me here, I have everything that you need to install your sub and your amp. Obviously, we have the amp. Today we're gonna to be using the MB Quartz Formula FX 2.80. This is quite an older unit. This is a sealed truck box with a audio band, audio bond, whatever this is. I, I don't even actually know what this is. This came in the car when I bought it back. Uh, I think this is a 10 inch. Here we have all the essentials. You guys are gonna need some RCA cables. These tell the radio that you have a sub. The power wire, uh, depending on how much power you wanna run, this is an eight gauge because I'm not running too much power. You can go up to like one gauge, three gauge, six gauge, eight gauge. This worked fine with the setup. Runs power to the amp, that's essential. Remote wire, this runs from the amp to the sub to tell the sub what to do from the amp. You have your remote wire. This tells the amp when to turn on so it's not constantly on and does not drain battery. This is very crucial. The same sized eight gauge ground cable. And then one of the most important parts is a secured fuse. So with everything on the ground in front of us right here, this is all you need. It looks complicated. It, it really is not. This is super easy. Let's get crack -a So the first thing that we need to do is run our power wire from the cabin of the car up near your battery. This is the front battery setup. If you have your battery in the trunk, then you're pretty much done already. So you need to find a place where to run your power up to your battery. And with the Mazda 3s, this is gonna be different on old cars. Some cars you have to do fender. We're gonna be doing it through the firewall near the driver's side of the car. So right there, what I'm pointing at, this cable that goes through and then that hole right there. That is the hood release lap. And there's a little grommet that goes around it. So we're going to run our power cable from the interior. We're going to poke it through that hole right there and it's going to come up through the engine bay. And here I have senior cord. And then I have this wire. Now what you guys need to do, you need the first 15 inches. You need to have, I think it's 15 inches, 15 inches, 15 something. Uh, you need to have your fuse. So I already have, this is from my old car. I can connect it right here and then run it through the battery at the top of the battery, connect the fuse together. I'm not gonna do that yet because I don't want to have power to this and then accidentally tap the power button when we're wiring this, ground out and die. So we're gonna leave this here. This is all pretty much set up and then we're gonna continue working in the car. And now we need to wire it to the back of the car where the sub is gonna be going. The other end of your wire and pretty much start running it through the carpet. We're gonna be running it in this thin piece right here, uh, hidden, and you won't be able to see it. Continue working to the back of the car in some situations, you're gonna have to pull out quite a bit. For example, the Mazda 3s, we gotta take out the rear seat. You can see I have my power wire in my designated area hidden until it comes to the trunk, which is perfect. So we'll leave this here, that's not connected, so it's not gonna hurt you. Now we're going to focus on our remote wire and our RCA cables, which are gonna go on the other side of the car. They need to go on the other side of the car or you will get static, they just won't work. I don't know what the science is behind it. Amateur, not a base head. We're gonna do exactly what we did on this side, but on the other side, but this is going to our radio. So with the RCM remote cables, normally you'll get ahead of some steps and you'll start from the back and go to the front. I'm gonna start from the front and go to the back because we're gonna have a lot of extra, which I can zip tie and hide it around here somewhere because this, and the remote you can obviously cut. This you're gonna need to cut, but the RCA cables you can't necessarily cut. So when we do the uh, remote, 
and the RCA, we're gonna go ahead and take the radio out. We're gonna wire these in right now so that we don't have to deal with coming back up to the front of the car. So like I said, we're gonna do it the same way on this side. Uh, I'm gonna run the wires up here. I'm gonna pull my fuse panel off to the center on top of the fuse panel cover and then run them up to the radio. So the RCA cables are simple. If you get a kit, normally they're labeled black and red. On the amp, it's right and left. You could do red is right. You know, little memos to know what you're doing. Worst case scenario, you're not gonna plunk this back in before it works, so you just switch them. Uh, there's gonna be different things. So there are two RCA plugs, red and white. It says R slash SW, rear subwoofer. Now, the remote can be tricky. You need to find an ignition source, something that gets power when you turn the key on. I haven't tried this before. In the back of your aftermarket radios, there comes out color cord. Yellow is your constant power, while red is your ignition power. So if technically, if I tap my remote into the red, it should turn the remote on when the key is turned. If I went and put it in the 12 constant, then the amp would be constantly on. I'm gonna use a vampire clip for an easy, quick connection. Now this may not necessarily be the right way, but in case I need to disconnect anything, these are quite easy to pull apart. I'm gonna grab the red wire, and then I'm gonna take my remote wire, give it a good tug, we know it's in there, you know it's gaining connection, we can close that. Now your remote wire is hooked up. So these two wires are hooked up. Now we're gonna go lead them to the back and we're actually almost done. So bear with me as I run my RCA and my remote to the trunk of the car where the power is. Okay guys, so all the hard part is Done. You guys thought that was maybe kind of easy. So all the wires we need are in the trunk. All the other stuff is hidden away. All you need to do is put the plastics back and keep the radio out for now because we got to test. Uh, you got your remote, your RCAs, your power, the ground sitting off to the side. Thing that we need to figure out really before you cut any wires is where the amp or where the sub's gonna go. A popular spot for grounds in the Mazda 3, and there's gonna be grounds anywhere. There's your, your trunks bare metal, even in a truck. Deep bolt brackets, as you can see right here. And hopefully it's not rusted. Yeah, that's all she wrote. <laughs> this, I guarantee you guys, this thing's gonna rattle away. And I can't pull that out. I have no idea why. Okay, so I have my ground hooked up to a bracket. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have the sub standing up in front of the seats like I told you guys but I'm gonna mount the amp to the front of it. So here is our amp. We're gonna throw it in and we're gonna wire this together. Then we're gonna mount it to the sub. Uh, here you have all your level, base, low pass, high pass. All this stuff I won't be covering. Uh, I definitely suggest watching like a professional video to see what to do with this stuff. So here we have senior amp. So the first three connections we're gonna do is ground, power your remote. Now with your power cable, you need to figure out how, where your amp is gonna go and how much power cord you need, and then you're gonna cut it off. So, because I have too much showing, I'm gonna throw some heat shrink over this, plug it in, and then shrink it. I don't want this wire to come out, so make sure that it's in there real good. Because if that comes out and touches your ground, uh-oh, so there you have that. Next, what we're gonna do is our ground cable. Stick it into the ground port. Make sure that's tight. Now, you're gonna grab your remote. Same situation. So all these three cables in. We go ahead and head to the other side where we can plug our RCA cable. So we'll put it into the right input and then left, and that's your RCA setup. Now everything is ready to go. What we're gonna go ahead and do now, we still need to connect power to our battery and we also need to do our speaker cables. So you got left and right. So for our positive port, we're gonna use a black with a white stripe. Then you can take your negative side, tighten that one down. What we're gonna do is head over to the battery and give this thing some power. So one of the important steps is uh, trying to figure out where to mount the fuse. I had a situation where I didn't put the caps on the end of my fuse so they were bare metal. It ended up by moving, bashing off this, shorted out that fuse, I blew that fuse, the car shut off for a quick second, and uh, no bueno. So you gotta make sure this thing is protected. So we can go ahead, I'm gonna start by putting this side in first. Real good, because I don't want that coming out. Then we can put the cap on. 
There's that, thread this cap on. Everything is protected. You are now open to touching this to power and as long as everything's wired properly on the amp, it should be good. You can undo this, gauge how much I need and where I'm gonna mount that. And now when you connect that, run back to your amp. We're gonna go check on the amp and make sure that the light for the amp is not on. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it's on. So that means we did Good, either re the remote wire is working or the ground is working or none of it's working. I assume it's working. So I'm gonna take a minute here and figure out where I wanna mount this and then we'll continue to turn it on. Okay guys, so take a look at that red light right there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key on. So as you guys can see, when I turn the key to accessory, this amp turns on, which means everything is successfully wired, which means we are left with hooking up the sub. So then here is the sub and amp hooked up, the amp is upside down only because I was short of ground wire and I don't got much play in this, but I rerouted everything. The audio wires, obviously the positive and the negative on the side went to the positive and negative outputs on the back of the sub. So realistically, everything should work here. That's sitting in a good spot. So now we're gonna go play on the radio. So with it off, uh, what we need to do first is Go into our settings uh, and then we're going to head over to audio go to subwoofer make sure that's on and then in here you can change your frequency your level um, and what way the speaker is pushing yeah okay i'm going to crank this It's good to have a sub back in here. So everything works, this is awesome. Uh, this is where you'll go and you'll set all your uh, amplifier settings Seen on the side of the car there. Um, make sure the car's running when you do that because this stuff drains your battery real quick unless you have a capacity. But we know everything works so we can bolt everything back in, put all our stuff back in, and we're good to go. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a like on the video. Comment down below if you guys have any questions about today's install tutorial. Anything to do with the sub wiring. I might have done things that some people might not like, but in the end, it all works. I think I did it maybe a bit easier of a way. I don't know. We'll see in the comments, whatever. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Keep it real. I'll see you all in the next one.